Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Have you ever wondered how safe you are from electrical shock in an electric vehicle if that vehicle is involved in an accident? In this video we will explore several different scenarios and show you what happens. Now a safety warning first. High voltage systems in electric vehicles can be very dangerous especially if you are not trained. Some of the things I'm going to show you in this video can be very dangerous if you don't have the proper tools and the proper training. So please don't try this at home. To understand how safe the high voltage system is in an electric vehicle, I like to use a flashlight to show my students how the high voltage system is insulated or isolated from the rest of the vehicle. So in this flashlight there are two D cell batteries. So if I take these batteries out. Each of these batteries has its own positive terminal and its own negative terminal. We put multiple batteries together and their voltages add together and in this flashlight we take two 1.5 volt batteries, put them in series to equal 3 volts. Now the negative side of those batteries actually connects to the metal housing of this flashlight. So this is actually battery negative and you can hold that all day long and it's not going to hurt you. Uh, it's, the flashlight won't turn on until I push a button here to complete the circuit and then we have the flashlight operating. Now if I took this flashlight and just put it in the back seat of your car, that this would pose no danger to you or anyone in your vehicle. The positive terminal of this flashlight is not touching the vehicle chassis. The negative terminal of the flashlight is not touching the vehicle chassis. Both of those are electrically insulated from the rest of the vehicle. So the high voltage batteries in electric vehicles are also totally isolated and insulated from the rest of the vehicle chassis and, and you as the driver and your passengers. The positive terminal of the high voltage battery does not touch the vehicle chassis. The negative terminal of the high voltage battery does not touch the vehicle chassis. And electric vehicle makers have gone to great lengths to make sure that it's totally isolated. Just like laying this flashlight somewhere in your car, it, it's not going to hurt anything. The rest of the car still runs on a 12 volt system. So, what happens when a positive terminal or a negative terminal from the high voltage battery does touch the sheet metal, the, the vehicle chassis? Well, let's, let's take a look at that. So to access the high voltage battery positive and battery negative terminals of this electric vehicle, this is a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV, underneath the hood is what General Motors calls the High Power Distribution Module, HPDM. But this is nothing more than a junction block. We have a connection right here from the high voltage battery, two cables that come in right here. And then all of these other connections on the sides are where power is distributed from the battery to other devices. So this distribution block underneath the hood has a cover that comes off. It has a bunch of bolts going all the way around the outside that you access from the top. It has two bolts that come in from the bottom that you can't access from the top and so you cannot take this off in the vehicle. You have to remove this entire module to take this cover off. Well I have purposely removed the screws from the bottom and put it all back together so that I can take the cover off and get to the high voltage connections inside of this box. And Once again this is very dangerous, this is not something anyone should do. Uh, I'm just doing it for a demonstration here. So let's look at the one on the car here and take the cover off. Okay, as you can see right here under the hood is the high power distribution module I just showed you. I've already removed all the bolts. I've got my high voltage personal protective lineman gloves on. They're all tested uh, to make sure that they're good. And I'm just going to lift this cover off. You must wear personal protective equipment to protect yourself from the high voltage that could be under this cover. Uh, if everything is working right with the vehicle off, there is no power under there and we will verify that here in a moment. Okay, to verify that there's no voltage there or that there is voltage there for the experiments I'm going to do, I have a Fluke 87 Series 5 meter right here 
and I've got a label on it that reads isolation voltage. So I'm, I've already tested the meter to make sure it's reading correctly. I've tested the meter leads. Fluke sells a proving unit that creates a high voltage DC or AC for you to test your meter, your meter leads and so on to make sure that it's capable of reading those high voltages. So I'm going to take with my insulative uh, glove on and take the positive terminal from our voltmeter and I'm going to put it right in on the positive bus bar of this distribution module. And this bus bar is connected right to the front of the high voltage battery under the car. Now I'm going to take the negative terminal here and put it right on the bus bar again, except this one is for the negative terminal of the high voltage battery. And what I want you to see right here on this meter is that there is no voltage, one millivolt, 0 0.001 volts DC. Now I'm going to go power up the vehicle and let's watch that multimeter. Okay, I've just powered up the vehicle. Notice that now we are reading 381.5 volts. So that is a direct connection to the battery through the electrical contactors inside the battery. And the contactors are what open when you shut the car off and close when you turn the car on to connect battery power to the high voltage electronics here underneath the hood, including the drive unit to make the vehicle move down the road. Okay, now I'm going to power off the vehicle and if everything is working correctly, that voltage should drop right down to close to zero in just a matter of seconds. Okay, here we go, powering off. All right, the vehicle is powered off. We have 20 volts, 18, 17. This is the big smoothing or DC coupling capacitor inside of the inverter that's powering down. It has a parallel resistance with it to draw that power down. So we're down to 10 volts a safe voltage. Okay, now that we've seen what the normal voltage is on those terminals, let's cause some malfunctions. Because at no time should either the positive or the negative terminal from the battery be connected to chassis ground, which is the housing of that distribution block. Well, if I were to come in, say, with just a jumper wire, and jump either the positive side or the negative side to the chassis of the vehicle, you might think that that would cause a, a big problem. Uh, let's take a look and see what it does. So we're down to 4.7 volts DC. So I'm going to connect a jumper wire right from battery positive, the bus bar, right to the housing of the distribution center. Now I want you to notice that we're still discharging the capacitor, 4.414 volts. It made no difference at all having the positive side of the bus bar connected to vehicle chassis. Um, so let's turn the vehicle on now. Let's power on the Chevrolet Bolt EV and see what happens. I have no warnings, no check engine light. Notice now that we still have 381.4 volts with that jumper wire connected. Now with that jumper wire connected from high voltage battery positive to the housing of that distribution module, we have just connected the entire vehicle chassis. All the sheet metal on this vehicle is now connected to 381.4 volts. But that doesn't matter. It's not an unsafe thing because unless you touch both the high voltage positive and the high voltage negative at exactly the same time, there's no risk of shock. So at this point, nothing has happened that even indicates to the driver of the vehicle that there is this unwanted connection to the, the battery positive. So if I open up the General Motors scan tool here, the the GDS2, and I go in and check for diagnostic trouble code 
information, we'll see if it has triggered any codes because the computer systems on these cars uh, monitor for this exact problem. This problem is called loss of isolation. On Toyotas, they call it a high voltage leak. Uh, it's loss of isolation. All right. Um, it does show that we have triggered some trouble codes. If I click on the code details, so one, it has the malfunction indicator lamp request illuminated. So the first code is just to turn on a warning light. The second code says drive motor one control module hybrid EV battery voltage system isolation lost. And then the other one says drive motor control module hybrid EV battery voltage isolation sensing circuit one low voltage. So those three trouble codes are the ones that we're going to look at. I have a few other trouble codes in here from other things, but we're going to ignore those for this demonstration. So I'm going to power down the vehicle now. So what I just simulated with that yellow jumper wire was a complete short circuit from one of your two high voltage, one's battery positive, one's battery negative cables that are that run in this car and on any electric vehicle. I'm using a Chevrolet Bolt, but it could be any car. I've just simulated one of these wires being pinched or rubbed through touching the vehicle chassis. And the car can, can continue working with one of those doing that. Now it can't continue working with both of them connected to vehicle chassis. That would blow the fuse in the service disconnect lever under the back seat or a some vehicles have the fuse inside the battery. It would definitely blow a fuse and the car would shut down. But you can take either the positive or the negative cables and have them completely short circuited to the vehicle chassis and the car will still operate. It'll just trigger trouble codes. Those trouble codes are for loss of isolation. And there's a special diagnostic procedure. There's a special multimeter and an insulation tester or meg ohm meter as they're called, to go in and, and measure these high voltage circuits when they're disconnected and see how much resistance they have. And there's a certain specification for that resistance. All right, so I just short circuited the positive side to vehicle chassis. Let's just change it and do the negative side and see what happens with that. All right, I have high voltage battery negative now short circuited to the vehicle chassis. Let's turn the vehicle on and see what happens. Notice our multimeter is still showing 381.4 volts. So I have just demonstrated that you can completely short circuit high voltage battery positive to the chassis or high voltage battery negative to the chassis and it'll have no effect. It triggers trouble codes. I have two more diagnostic trouble codes on the scan tool for the detection of this short circuit, but the ready light is still on and the vehicle can still move down the road. So in an automobile accident, if either of those two wires gets pinched to the vehicle chassis, it's, there's no danger. If both vehicle, if both high voltage wires get pinched to the vehicle chassis at the same time, it should blow the fuse in the battery or the battery's uh, service disconnect lever and open circuit the battery to where there's no voltage, no danger there anyway. Now there are other situations that can occur that can cause loss of isolation that is different than a direct short circuit. So for example, if uh, water somehow or coolant leaked inside the battery or water got inside the battery or water got inside of any of these high voltage electronics here, uh, water can be conductive. Antifreeze can be conductive. Uh, the air conditioning compressor refrigerant oil can be conductive. Uh, the transmission fluid can be conductive under certain uh, situations. And so if the wrong fluids have been put in the vehicle or if there's a fluid leak that allows intrusion into these electronics, then we would see a little bit different of a uh, situation here. So the way the vehicle detects unwanted short circuits in the high voltage battery positive and high voltage battery negative is with what is called active testing and passive testing. Active testing is done by the battery, which is underneath the vehicle. 
The computer inside the battery, called the Beckham, the battery energy control module, performs what is called active testing, and it does that every time you shut the vehicle off. Right before it opens both contactors and disconnects power from this underhood junction block, it looks to see if there was a loss of isolation. And if there was, then it triggers a trouble code, and you'll be, you will be able to see that trouble code on the scan tool. But that was an indication of what happened when the vehicle was shut off. That is not an actual live reading if you were to hook the scan tool up and look uh, like right now. Uh, the other type of testing is called passive testing. And it's done by the power inverter module, which is underneath this uh, distrib distribution module. And the power inverter module takes high voltage DC power from the battery and converts it to AC power and to drive the electric motor in the drive unit. The power inverter module performs this passive testing all the time the vehicle is powered up. So anytime that ready light is on, it's watching for loss of isolation and it's live. And we can watch that on the scan tool. So right now I've got the scan tool powered up and let's take a look at what happens when we turn on the vehicle with no short circuits or anything else. Uh, going on. Let's just take a look at the normal reading to begin with and then we'll begin creating additional short circuits but through r high resistances to simulate a short circuit through a conductive liquid or fluid that can happen on these vehicles. So we've got our multimeter disconnected. I'm going to power on the vehicle now. Okay, the vehicle is powered on, and as you can see here, the bottom two parameters are drive motor one control module positive supply voltage, and the bottom one is drive motor one control module negative supply voltage. And notice that both of those read 190.06 volts at this moment, with a total battery pack voltage in the third from the bottom uh, parameter of 381.16 volts. So the way this works is we take our battery voltage, 380 volts, we divide it in two, and we have on the positive side, through a resistor network for loss of isolation diagnosis, we drop half of that voltage. So 380, we drop 190 of that across this resistor network to the vehicle chassis. And then that's on the positive side. We do the same thing on the negative side, and so we have all 380 volts uh, dropped across two resistor networks for diagnostics on the positive side and the negative side. And we can monitor that. And they tell us in the service information, as long as those two voltages are within 15 volts of each other, then pretty much nothing is wrong uh, on this vehicle. But as, the, as short circuits come along, either a direct short circuit, like I showed you with the jumper wire, or through some sort of a fluid uh, high resistance, then those voltages won't be equal and they will shift. And the side with the loss of isolation, its voltage will decrease. Okay, I'm ready to connect this 10 million ohm resistor between the high voltage battery positive and the housing of the uh, power distribution box there. Uh, but here's, here's something to think about. Uh, I want to measure the voltage drop across that 10 million ohm resistor as well. Well, the problem is these Fluke 87 meters have an internal impedance, which is measured in ohms, of almost 10 million ohms. It, it's 11 million ohms. So the meter itself is already putting 10 million ohms of resistance uh, in the circuit. So Rather than putting this 10 million ohm resistor in, we'll just hook the meter up and watch what that does to the isolation voltage differences on the scan tool. Now the meter on the left is the one that is you, we're using to measure voltage. The one on the right, we're measuring how much current goes through this circuit with the 11 million ohms of resistance connected. So let's turn on, let's power on the vehicle, see what happens. All right, the vehicle's powered on. Let's take a look at what voltage we get. So as you can see here, we are measuring 175.8 volts from high voltage battery positive to the chassis of the vehicle. And notice on the meter on the right, 
that we are reading 17.6 microamps, millionths of an amp. So that's an extremely small amount of current uh, in this circuit. And that's what we would expect with an 11 million ohm uh, resistance or impedance that this meter is uh, offering. So the voltmeter on the left there showed 175.8 volts. Notice here on our scan tool that on the positive isolation side, it shows 176 volts. Almost exactly the same thing. So that means the passive isolation testing done by the inverter module is watching this occur uh, right now. All right, so that was with 10 million, 11 million ohms of resistance. Now let's go to half of that amount, uh, approximately 5 million ohms. So next I'm going to replace the multimeter with its 11 mega ohm internal impedance with one that's half of that approximately, 4.65 mega ohms. And then we'll watch what that does on the scan tool because now we're cutting the isolation resistance a little more than in half. So it's getting closer and closer to a direct short circuit. So I'll take the voltmeter out on the left We'll just hook up this short circuit through, through the amp meter there and watch how much current goes through it. So let me power down the car first. Okay, I've got the 4.6 mega ohm resistor connected in series with the amp meter, short circuiting, high voltage, battery positive to the housing. Let's see what this does when we turn on the car. Okay, so let's take a look at how much current goes through this 4.65 mega ohm resistor and we get 34.6 microamps. And if we look at our scan tool now, we get a 160 volt drop across that resistance rather than the 190 volt drop in a normal situation. Notice that the voltage drop on the negative side has gone up and that those two voltages still add together to equal the 300 and 80 volts of the battery itself. Okay, next I'm going to take out the 4.6 mega ohm resistor and put in a 1.16 mega ohm resistance and see what that does to our current. We'll shut off the car first, of course. Okay, I've got the 1.16 mega ohm resistance installed. Let's see what that does to the voltage drop on the scan tool and the current through our amp meter here power on the vehicle. Okay, as you can see here, our scan tool voltage on the positive side has now dropped down to 109.98 volts, and the current has gone up to 93.8 microamps, or 93.8 millionths of an amp. Okay, next we're going to install a half a million ohm resistance, uh, 551 kilo ohms. Okay, with the 551,000 ohm resistor installed, you can see here on the scan tool that the voltage drop on the positive supply side has dropped down to 73.97, and the negative side has gone up to 306.02. Both sides added together still equal the 380 volts of the battery. Now we're going to cut that resistance in half again, and we'll go in with a 222,000 ohm resistance. Now at some point here there has to be a threshold where a diagnostic trouble code sets and it does. It, it sets right around 264,000 ohms for the very first failure detected and then a lot of these trouble codes are a type B code meaning they have to have two failures in a row to turn on the uh, service vehicle soon light. Um, on the second failure I believe it's the threshold is, is only 318,000 ohms. So somewhere between 318,000 and 265,000 ohms, that is the threshold where the car says, all right, there's something wrong. Uh, let's trigger a code and get this checked out. So we're dropping below that threshold now with the 222,000 ohm resistance. We'll cycle the power and get that installed. Okay, we've just powered up the vehicle with 222,000 ohms of resistance. Notice here on the scan tool that the positive supply voltage, isolation voltage is clear down to 40 volts and the negative side has gone up to 339. Uh, I get an email from 
uh, GM's OnStar system saying that there's something wrong with the high voltage battery pack. Whenever I do this, I'm sure they're wondering what is going on with that car. <laughs> so with 222,000 ohms of resistance, it looks like we have 175.3 microamps in that same circuit. All right, our next resistance will be about half of that uh, 107,000 ohms of resistance. Okay, now with our 107,000 ohm resistor installed, our high voltage, positive isolation voltage has dropped down to 20 volts, and the negative's gone up to 359. So notice now with a 107,000 ohm resistance, we have 197.5 microamps of current. So a very small amount of current. Now, the one measurement I, I forgot to take is how much current do we get with zero ohms of resistance? So we've seen everything from the current in 11 million ohms, 5 million ohms, 2 million ohms, uh, 1 million ohms, 500,000 ohms, 222,000 ohms, 100,000 ohms, and now zero. So to create a zero ohm resistance, I'll just hook the meter leads together in place of our resistors and let's power the vehicle back on. Okay, as you can see here on the scan tool, we are down to zero volts of positive isolation voltage and all 379.99 volts are across the negative supply. So a, a direct short to chassis ground. Let's take a look at how much current we have in this circuit. Notice that with a direct short from high voltage battery positive to chassis ground, we only have 222.3 microamps of current. So the power inverter module on this car, and there are very similar systems on everybody else's hybrid and electric vehicles, it monitors these voltage drops. And once it detects a, a voltage difference between the high side and the low side of more than a certain amount or a certain amount of current, uh, it depends on the vehicle, it triggers a, a diagnostic trouble code and will turn on some sort of a warning message or just show the uh, service vehicle soon light or check engine light, whatever it may be, uh, depending on if it's an all electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle. But it, it can detect these types of problems. Now, why would we have all of these high resistances that I just mentioned? Uh, because in an automobile accident, it typically the circuit might get pinched, which is a d direct short like we're looking at right here, or the, something might get damaged, cracked or whatever to where battery coolant or coolant for the power electronics uh, can get inside of the uh, high voltage uh, circuits. So what I've got here is just a cup of water from a bottle of, of water, and we're going to stick these uh, meter leads into this cup of water. I know it's not a very scientific test, but let's see what just plain water does uh, in this circuit. What type of voltage drop will we get and how much current will we get? Let's take a look at this glass of water now. Power down the vehicle. So now I've got the circuit being shorted to chassis through just plain drinking water. If you look right there, you can see my glass of water, a couple of meter probes, and now let's power on the vehicle and watch what happens. Okay, as you can see here on the scan tool, it acts just like a direct short with no resistance. We have a zero volt positive isolation voltage and all 375 uh, volts dropped across the negative side. So let's take a look at how much current there is in our water short circuit here. 216.9 uh, microamps almost exactly what it was with a direct short circuit. So that tells us that any fluids that are conductive that get into the high voltage electronics uh, can cause a loss of isolation to occur. That's why these batteries that are underneath the vehicles have to be hermetically sealed. There's a smoke test video that I put together where we test the sealing integrity of the battery to make sure that no water can get into it as you drive down wet, sloshy, wintry, or rainy roads. Uh, even uh, automatic transmission fluid, air conditioning compressor uh, oil, uh, antifreeze, 
any of those things that over time become more and more conductive can cause a loss of isolation diagnostic trouble code to set. Now, how do you determine where this short circuit is? Because it's not going to be just right out here in the open for you to look at. If you look at this junction block, we have an electrical connector for the air conditioning compressor module. So unplug it and see if the, the diagnostic trouble code uh, goes away or if the uh, isolation voltage returns to normal. There's a connection there for the onboard charger module. So when you plug in the external charge cord to the vehicle, uh, just unplug it and see if the problem goes away. There's a, uh, the heater for the battery to heat the coolant that goes into the battery. That's another connection here. Unplug it, see if the problem goes away. There's a passenger compartment heater coolant uh, heater that has another connection over here. You can unplug it. There's a connection on the side here that goes down to the inverter module. If you unplug that, it, it will isolate the uh, distribution block from the ability of the inverter module to detect any type of a problem. If the problem goes away, then you know that something in this distribution block has a problem. If the problem is still there, then you know you have a problem inside the inverter itself. Uh, the, the high voltage battery connection on the back of the distribution block, uh, it has to supply the power to even be monitored. So you can't disconnect that uh, for diagnostics. However, there are two scan tool diagnostic features to test the battery's internal uh, circuits for loss of isolation. So let's take a look at those. Uh, let me disconnect these wires and get everything back to normal first. Okay, I've disconnected all my short circuits, taken all my wires out of there, put the gasket and the cover back on the distribution module there. And now let's power back up the vehicle and see if it recovers. Okay, as you can see here on the scan tool, the car has recovered. Both isolation voltages are back to 190 volts. It has triggered some diagnostic trouble codes. Some of these diagnostic trouble codes you cannot clear just by undoing the battery or by a tr or just a regular scan tool. There's a special function to clear these codes on the scan tool. Let's take a look at that next. Okay, as you can see here on the scan tool screen, there's an option to clear secured high voltage diagnostic trouble codes. And that is a different command than just clearing diagnostic trouble codes. It tells us to turn off the vehicle, open and close the driver door, and then to press continue on this screen. Vehicle off. Driver door cycled. So now I hit continue. And we're done. Okay, while we are on this screen, if we come down a couple of items, notice that there is a hybrid EV battery pack active isolation test. So this is the test that is done every time the vehicle is shut off and the contactors in the battery open. So let's, let's do this test. It tells us to turn the ignition off, turn the park lamps on, and then refer to service information for further instructions and press continue. So ignition is off. I will turn on the park lamps. Okay, the park lamps are turned on. I'm going to hit continue. And notice right up here, the top parameter there gives us the insulation test resistance of 2,925 kilo ohms, which is 2.95 mega ohms. So 2.95 million ohms of resistance is the isolation voltage detected inside of the high voltage battery by the battery energy control module, the BECM, when it shuts down or closes or, I'm sorry, opens the contactors. This is a test that you can't get in with a mega ohm meter or an insulation tester and do this test without dropping the battery down and measuring, or taking the cover off and then taking some measurements. So this is a quick, easy way to determine if there's a loss of isolation inside the battery. Now let's go back. Notice now we have a battery pack heater isolation test. Now the battery pack heater, as you can see here, is underneath the car and it is controlled 
uh, over the CAN network. And so just coming in with an isolation tester on its electrical connector doesn't activate it. When the heater's off, there, it may not show you a loss of isolation. It, it has to be activated to uh, have that isolation lost if there's a problem inside the heater itself. So let's run this uh, battery pack heater passive isolation test. It tells us to place the vehicle in propulsion active mode, which is another name for the ready mode. Uh, ensure the transmission is in park and refer to the service manual for further information. Well, right now the vehicle is off from our last test, so now I have to turn it back on. Okay, I'll hit continue. And then notice the very top parameter up here has the hybrid EV battery pack heater power command. And right now it's at 0%, so the heater is off. Notice down below here we have our isolation voltage on the positive and negative side of about 190 volts apiece, which is what we saw before. Now let's turn on the heater. There's a button down to the bottom right here, so we'll turn it on. Notice the percent is going up. We're at 45%. So we're increasing the amount of power used by the battery heater. I can hear the coolant pump for the battery heater running. And finally, we're at 100%. So the battery heater is turned on all the way. And notice our isolation voltage is still 190 volts apiece. And if we scroll down a little bit, it gives us a calculated resistance value of 2,900 kilo ohms or 2.9 mega ohms of internal uh, impedance. So notice it says the test has completed and has passed. And so there are two uh, different tests you can do with the official General Motors scan tool to check for loss of isolation on devices that are e either really hard to get to or you can't test them unless they're turned on. Another example is the air conditioning compressor. The loss of isolation may not occur until the air conditioning compressor is turned on. All right, in the factory service information, there are various tables that show what the resistance should be as measured with a meter like this one right here, the Fluke 1587 insulation tester, also known as a meg ohm meter. I used to think it was mega ohm meter, but I looked it up and it's meg ohm meter, uh, which doesn't make sense to me. It should be mega, but what do I know? Um, anyway, this meter will use up to 1000 volts to check resistance. So on this car here, we put it, we're told to put it on the 500 volt scale and take these resistance measurements. And that way we're simulating the same voltages that the circuits run on. Okay, if you look closely at this insulation meter, I've turned the rotary dial all the way over to the far right hand side, as far as it'll go clockwise, to the orange labels, 50 volts to 1000 volts insulation test. Then over here on these two input terminals on the left, we have insulation and it shows positive on this red terminal. It shows negative on the lower red terminal. We do not use the black common terminal on the other side. So I will take my uh, black meter lead and plug it into the negative input terminal on the left. And then I could take my red meter lead and plug it into the top there and take a resistance measurement by pushing the insulation test button or there's a different meter lead that has three input terminals right there and this meter lead has this button right here to push to activate the insulation test. Pushing this button right here does the same thing as pushing this button here. Now, on the screen itself, notice that it says we are on the 500 volt scale. So that means this meter can output 500 volts. It can also output 1,000 volts. So there's a 50, a 100, a 250, a 500, and a 1,000 volt scale. And you want to pick a voltage that is, that is as high or higher 
than the operational voltage of the vehicle. So on the Chevrolet Bolt EV here, the maximum fully charged battery voltage is right around 390 volts. So picking the 500 volt scale on this meter is the one to do. And that's what the service information tells us also. But with 500 volts, we are going to need our personal protective equipment uh, on because this meter, as some of my students can attest, will definitely shock you if you <laughs> don't uh, have your personal protective equipment on. All right, now I have disconnected the air conditioning control module electrical connector. And it has two orange wires going to it. One of the orange wires has a black stripe. That is high voltage battery negative. The one that's all orange is just high voltage battery positive. And so the test in the service information, as you can see here, tells us to check from high voltage battery positive to chassis ground. So we will run one test to chassis ground or to the chassis, it's not really ground. And then we'll do another one on the ground side. And we are expecting to see above 550 million ohms, which is what this meter does really well. If you tried to use a regular industrial multimeter to take these measurements, they only can measure between uh, 20 and 40 million ohms uh, at the most, depending on the meter. So let's, let me get these meter leads hooked up and we'll run a test. I'll put my alligator clip on, connect that to chassis, and then we'll take our meter with the probe tip on it, and we'll probe each of the positive and negative wires there. So I'm going to come in and just touch, not pierce or probe, the positive side, and then push the button. And notice it shows greater than 550 mega ohms with 527 volts applied. Now let's do the negative side. Here we go. Greater than 550 million ohms with 527 volts uh, applied. So if there was a, a short circuit from either of these two wires to the chassis, it would have shown up now. Because if I put this meter probe on chassis connection and push the button, I get zero mega ohms. And then if I have a totally open circuit, like right now, if I push the button, it, give me, it gives me the 550 mega ohms uh, as well. So it shows us that we have an open circuit. Now, uh, that is just the wiring from the distribution block down to the air conditioning compressor uh, module where it takes DC, converts it to AC, and it has its own little three-phase motor inside the air conditioning compressor. And we can't test that portion of the circuit, but you can, you do have the ability to turn it on and off uh, with the scan tool and do some testing that way. All right, well, my, the main point I wanted to show you here with this meter is that you can use it to test using high voltages to test resistances. And the specifications in the GM, the Toyota, everybody else's service manual will give you a minimum resistance that each circuit, if it's in good shape, uh, should have. And if it's lower than that, then you need to dig in and see uh, what the problem is. Okay, to wrap up this video, I asked at the start of the video, how safe are we with an electric vehicle if it gets in an accident and has any of the high voltage circuits pinched uh, to the chassis or pinched together? And I've shown you what happens or told you what happens on in that instance. We've taken a look at several different resistance values uh, that simulate different sh levels of short circuits to the chassis from the high voltage systems. And I've, I've shown you what a glass of water does. It, it, it acts like a direct short. And we've talked about keeping moisture 
keeping parts sealed, keeping moisture out of things, uh, especially as they age, they become more conductive and can cause loss of oscillations. Keeping the proper fluids and liquids in your vehicle is important also. All fluids are not the same. You need to have the prescribed exact fluids installed, including your antifreeze, your transmission fluid, your, your air conditioning compressor oil, uh, and so on. And we've seen that we can trigger and clear trouble codes. There are some trouble codes that won't go away until you have a special scan tool function to clear them. And I've shown you just a little bit of what the MEG ohm meter can do. Uh, I'm going to have a separate video on just using the MEG ohm meter uh, to perform diagnostics for loss of isolation and other things. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.